And I was like enamored that like someone from Reefer Madness was there. And I think Andy said that I could come by the warehouse and just check it out. And I told my mom, like, we could go after school. We could go to the warehouse. I could take a look at this. Which warehouse do you, I Walt mean, Smith. you probably get that. So it was at the, at the Pacific Aqua Farms, yep. Walt Smith. Yep. Walt Smith. It was by yep. uh, uh, LAX. Yep. And my mom said, yes. So we connected with Andy, drove down to Reefer Madness, and you were there. And I remember the first time I was there being like blown away. Like this was a kid in a candy store moment because I had my my aquarium set up and going to like the local fish store is one thing, but being able to go into a wholesaler of like, I don't know, 10, 20, 30,000 square feet of fish and coral all in like huge, like it just long just, raceways. You're right. Yep. Water hundreds of yep. fish, thousands of corals. And to see this, I was just like blown away that like this exists and everything you could ever want was like was there. And so I was introduced to Chris and I think I was just so blown away at like looking at everything. And I knew all the names of everything. I studied every name of every coral out there and I could be like, oh, that was a Montipora Capricornus. And this is an Acropora nobilis and like just all these names. And I think you offered me a position where like if I wanted to come in after school, I could help out. What was going through your mind at that point? Like I'm some kid walking into your business, just picking out names and fish and coral. Well, the the funny thing is about about people and and well and, and the reefing hobby is that a lot of folks they they're into the they're into like the mechanics of it they're into like the plumbing they're into the lighting whatever but in this in your situation you knew a lot at that age I, mean, I think you you know you pretty much astounded me to be able to name a lot of those corals so when I see I don't see it often mm-hmm. even now after doing this so many years there's very few people that actually can pick up and, and identify those particular corals because not only do you have to remember a scientific name, but you also have to remember the common name that was used in the in the aquarium and the reefing hobby. Yeah. And there's hundreds of thousands of names. Each company, I mean, especially nowadays, each company has their own name. Some some they use from, from company to company, but a lot of them are unique to the company. And so you knew, I mean, back in those days, it was a little bit different than today because yeah. today you're fragging. A lot, but back then, especially for Reefer Madness, Reefer Madness actually used, uh, sorry, imported corals from Fiji, from Tonga, from the islands of Fiji, from the islands of Tonga, from Bali, um, from Indonesia, so on and so forth. And you're getting colonies, you're acclimating those colonies, you're photographing those colonies, and you're shelling those colonies. So you somehow, I don't know why at that age you would be so into it, you knew that. And I'm like, game on. And, yeah. you know, and I think, I think at that point we just said, yeah, why don't we, you know, see if he can do it part time, start helping out with, you know, whatever. And, uh, I think it, and five years later and you flunk out of school, Yeah, I, I don't know if that was the best decision, but you know, it's, it's good. So back then, was it because you wanted the help or was it because you just liked the enthusiasm? For me, it's always about enthusiasm. Okay. If you have, if I'm going to hire somebody, I have to have that enthusiasm because if you're, if you don't have the enthusiasm, it's it's hard to you can't force you you can't force that the the desire to to learn that particular stuff. Like for me, in the example, you know, from you know some of the finance stuff you, that you you know you do a lot of that stuff is you know I try to remember, but yeah. naming a coral, you know, figuring out that speci- the species of fish, boom, it's like bam, it's right in there. Yeah. So that's that's kind of the thing that you know that's the, that's if I see it. I, I, you know, I like to be able to what kind of cheesy term, but nurture it in that sense, because it, it helps us in the long run for sure. Right. Did my age concern you about being like, I, I I was probably 12 or 13. I'm sure it did at the time. I can't really remember. I mean, that's a long time ago. Right. But, um, you know, that's what, 2003? Three. Yeah, yep. 2003. So that's a long time ago. And that was before we even moved to our, you know, the second location. Yep. Um, so yeah, no, I'm 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 sure that was the main thing. It's just the enthusiasm that that makes up for you know ninety percent of it for sure. Yeah. I was so excited too. It was every Tuesday and Thursday. I get picked up from school 
And either my mom or my dad would drive me over yep. to the Your warehouse. Your dad had the Ford Explorer. Yep. I remember the red. I think it was red. He had a green one. I had a green, green okay. one. And green, then the red was right. later. That was the, the upgrade. Red, okay. The red oh, Ford the Explorer. Upgrade. All right. So I did remember something. Yeah, yeah. The green Ford Explorer yep. would drop me off. Yep. And then I forget. My mom would go and like read a book sometimes, which I hated. I hated that she would like be around all. The, I just wanted her to go and leave and then let me do my thing. But sometimes she'd stick around and like read a book, which I, I just I didn't like that. But uh, But my dad would just drop me off. And uh, then come and pick me up sometimes like nine or 10 o'clock at night. Yep. And I was, I, I didn't even want to leave. And there are several times too, where I would be there until probably 11 PM or midnight. You would leave usually around nine. Wait, 13 years old. Yes. I was working. I loved it. 